Now let's look at existential introduction. Like universal elimination, this is pretty straightforward. We just say that if something holds of a constant, for instance, if Sparky's a dog, then something's a dog. The second rule we're going to look at is that of existential introduction, sometimes called generalization. On this rule, we take a statement about something by name, for instance, A is a cube, and come up with a more general claim that something is a cube. Now this may seem obvious, but it actually faces a bit of a problem that's worth keeping in mind, because we have to state, remember from our earlier video on constants, this rule that all constants have to name something. So we saw that we have no constant for things that don't exist, for instance, Santa or Pegasus, and here's why. So take Pegasus and use a predicate like object. Now what this says is that Pegasus is an object, but we are allowed to take from this the, the sentence, there is an object which is Pegasus, and that plainly won't do because there isn't any such object. This sentence says something about what really exists in the world. Incidentally, this is also why we treat the existential sign as a quantifier and not as a predicate. Imagine what would happen if we treated exists as a predicate. We would say, Pegasus exists, and then we would want to negate this, so we would say that Pegasus doesn't exist, but then by generalization, this gives us the awkward sentence that there exists something which does not exist. But this business of existence as a predicate or as an operator is, to say the least, fraught. And in fact, there are whole metaphysical systems and even proofs of the existence of God, for instance, the one produced by Anselm of Canterbury, which seem to turn on the question of whether or not existence is a predicate. And similarly, some logicians, especially uh, Alexius Meinung, and following him, Terence Parsons, have suggested that there are such things as non-existent objects. Now that might sound a bit weird, but it's also weird to say that the reference of Santa and Pegasus and Gandalf is all the same, which is to say the empty set. So that's something at least to be aware of. But the point is that if you find this puzzling, or in some respects a bit counterintuitive, that's not a bad sign. For our purposes though, we treat existentials as operators and we do not have constants that name anything that doesn't exist.